In this video, we're going to go over the ICU nursing skill of administering the critical care medication called norepinephrine, which is most commonly referred to by its generic name, levofen. This is a medication given to critically ill patients with severe low blood pressure or hypotension. For more ICU nursing skill videos like this, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell for notifications. Let's get started. This is what an order for levofed can look like on your EMAR. On the top, you will find the total concentration. It also tells you the milligrams and how many milliliters come in the bag. At the bottom, it tells you the final concentration, which is 32 micrograms per milliliter. If you click on the three periods between the ML and the IV, it explains that this is levofed in D5W. Next, you want to click on the text box and you'll be able to see the orders. Here we have orders to start at the initial rate of 5 micrograms per minute then to titrate 2 micrograms per minute every 15 minutes as needed, with a maximum dose of 30 micrograms per minute. Our goal is to maintain a map above 65, and the weaning parameters are to wean by 2 micrograms per minute every 15 minutes. Now let's document our intervention. First you go to your status board to view your patients. Then you go to process intervention. Here's a pro tip when working with Meditech. Do you see how the I is capitalized and underlined? This means that there is a keyboard shortcut. So you can press the I and go straight to the process intervention section. Next we are going to go to the IV drip titration section. If you do not see this section, you can add it by going to the Add Intervention or clicking the AI in the text box. This is how you add the intervention. Type in IV for drip titration and then push the control key next to highlight and add the intervention. You will see a check mark indicating that the intervention has been selected and then the option to save the intervention will come up. Now that we have the intervention added, we can select Document Intervention or Document Now. Document Intervention will give us the opportunity to change the time. This is the one that I mainly use so that I can make sure my documentation is timely. This is the next screen we will see. Since amiodarone and nicardipine were already added, we can add Levofed as the third drip. When you click on the space, you will find a text box with possible drips open up. These drips will be in alphabetical order, with the generic name. Here you can see Levofed with the generic name of norepinephrine. Go ahead and select this one. So here we select number 40, the norepinephrine in D5W. First select option 1, which is start. Now first we add the concentration, which we got from the original order, which is 8 milligrams and 250 mLs. Then we select the IV drip dose and units. The easiest way for me to do this is to take it from the pump, and the pump will directly give you the micrograms per minute. Lastly, the mLs per hour, which will also be provided on the pump. Next, it will ask you what the IV drip titration parameter value is, and we will select option 8, which says MAP, or mean arterial pressure. Then it will ask you what the titration parameter value is, which as ordered, we indicate that our goal is to maintain a MAP above 65. Then it will ask you what the actual parameter value is. And this is where you document your patient's actual map. So next, let's titrate Levofed. So let's take a look at the original order, which remember in the instructions will be in a text box. So as you see here, the order says to titrate by two micrograms per minute every 15 minutes as needed in order to keep the map greater than 65. Since our map is 60 right now and not 65, we're going to titrate up by 2 micrograms going up to 7 micrograms per minute. The easiest way for me to get the mLs per hour is to look at the pump, which is 13.1 mLs per hour. Now we're going to document our intervention. When we go to titrate our intervention, the top two boxes will auto-fill, 
since we are just adjusting the dose and the only thing we have to fill out here is the current map, which explains why we performed our titration. Notify orders. In order to follow hospital policy, we must either follow the order as described, or if needed, the physician or advanced practice provider can give us an order. So here's how the order would look. First, you go to the order section. You place the doctor's name into Meditech. In Meditech, we use the first three letters of the last name and the first two letters of the first name. Our doctor today is named Great Doc, so we will type in caps G-R-E-D-O. Then search the word notify. You will find one notify order with nothing after it, and when you select that box, a text box will appear. In the text box, you can type the order you received, and for that one rate change, you can use this order. However, if there is a change in the blood pressure, you must revert to using the original order unless you get another order from the physician or advanced practice provider. It could look something like this. Start levofed at 10 micrograms per minute. Lastly, block charting, which is a four hour interval charting. There may be some patients who are very unstable or very sensitive to the medication, and you may find yourself going up and down, up and down, up and down on the drip all day. For example, you can have the drip at 15 micrograms per minute and the MAP is 76. So you would titrate down by two, and the map drops down to 60, so you have to titrate back up. This can happen pretty much all day. I will say that when this does happen, it's important to look at the underlying cause. Is the patient bleeding, or is the patient intravascularly depleted? In the cases where you're going up and down, it's important to have more ways to assess your patient's hemodynamic status. This is when you could suggest advanced hemodynamic monitoring, such as a hemisphere or EV1000 to at least assess the cardiac output, cardiac index, stroke volume, and possibly CVP. The doctor could assess with an ultrasound to see the patient's volume status as well. But back to block charting. In the instance where you're going up and down, up and down on your drips, we have something called block charting, where you can document three times in a four hour interval instead of documenting the 25 steps you actually took. So let's get started and go over block charting. You will start out the same way you start out with all drips. Go to the titration section and then you will select the drip and then option two to titrate. Each time you return to the medication to document a titration, it will ask you to verify the concentration. At my facility, pharmacy always mixes the same concentration, which is eight milligrams and 250 mLs or 32 micrograms per mL. To indicate that you will be implementing the four hour block charting, you will type start on the first titration, exactly like this, followed by your patient's last map. Now, it is expected that you will be keeping track of your titrations, usually on your paper reporting sheet. However, since the patient is unstable, you are not able to log into the computer and document every titration because it's very time consuming. So the next thing that you will document is the time that you reached your max dose and what the max dose was. So here we are indicating that our max dose was 21 micrograms per minute and the mLs per hour were 39.4. As you see here, we document the word max next to the 21. Make sure you document the map, which indicates why you are titrating. So here we documented that our max was 21 micrograms per minute, and our map at that time of titration was 53. The last step in the four hour block charting is to say the dose that we ended the four hour block. The word end signifies the end of the four hour block charting interval, and will be the last time you document for that four hour interval. Hopefully, your patient has stabilized by now. However, if needed, you can start another four hour block charting segment. So as you see here, we placed our dose that we ended the four hour block charting interval and we typed the word end. So we ended our four hour block interval at nine micrograms per minute at 16.9 mLs and our map was 67, which is above 65. And that indicates that at that time, we don't have to titrate anymore, of course, unless the map changes. If the map changes, we can either start another four hour block interval of charting or simply follow the order and document the titration changes as needed, as long as you follow the original order. Okay, that's it guys. I hope you guys liked this video. If you want more videos like this, give this video a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Bye.